In this video, we will describe a robotic ureterocalicostomy to repair an obstructed UPJ. The patient is a 43-year-old male with a history of renal stones. He underwent three unsuccessful Eswell treatments at an outside institution. Then an attempted PCNL was performed and a malacot was left within the patient. A second PCNL was required to remove the malacot and remove the remaining stones. This is an image of an IVP after the three unsuccessful Eswell treatments were performed. Notice the diminutive renal pelvis and the significant obstruction. At that time, his renal scan showed 25% function of the left kidney. A retrograde was performed and an attempted endourotomy was performed with balloon dilation. This was unsuccessful and he continued to have stricture and pain. A non-contrast CT showed adequate upper pole parenchyma, but an atrophic lower pole and some minimal stone burden in the lower pole. This is a retrograde that was performed after the two PCNLs. Notice the 1.5 centimeter proximal ureteral stricture and the atrophic lower pole that is the sequela of the two outside percutaneous nephrolithotomies. Counseling the patient of his different options, which included nephrectomy, ileoureter, ureter calicostomy, and autotransplant, the patient elected to undergo a robotic ureter calicostomy. The patient was positioned in the semi-lateral position with both legs out in stirrups. This allowed access to the genitalia as well as the ability to place a cystoscope and or a ureteroscope up the left ureter during the operation if necessary. Trocar placement is identical to that used for robotic pyeloplasty. Camera at the umbilicus, robotic arms along the midclavicular line, an accessory port in the contralateral lower quadrant. The first part of the operation is performed using laparoscopic techniques. The distal ureter is isolated with a vessi loop. It is dissected up to the area of stricture as seen here. The ureter is transected just below the stricture with sharp endoshears. Once the ureter has been transected, the robot is then docked. A Maryland dissector is used in the left hand and a pot scissors in the right. At this point, the ureter is being freed from all the fibrosis and is spatulated, preparing it for the ureteral calicostomy. Now the hilum is dissected from all surrounding structures. Here you see the renal artery, just posterior to the left renal vein. The artery is being clamped in preparation for the lower pole amputation. Note, prior to clamping the artery, an ultrasound probe was used to identify the level of the lower pole calyx. Here you see sharp endoshears being used to amputate the lower pole to the lower pole calyx. Figure of eight pinpoint sutures are placed into the artery and vein to control bleeding. 2O Vicryl on an SH needle is used and intracorporeal suturing techniques are performed. A total of four sutures were utilized to control these vessels. With the large arterial and venous vessels controlled, the tissue link device is used to coagulate the rest of the parenchyma. Careful attention is paid not to coagulate or injure the calyx itself. At this point, the arterial clamp has been removed and excellent hemostasis is confirmed. Here you see a well-preserved wide opening to the lower pole calyx. Prior to performing anastomosis, a uteroscope is placed through the trocar into the operative field. It is directed into the lower pole calyx and the entire kidney is inspected. There were no stones identified within the kidney. Now the anastomosis is performed with a 
3-0 vicral suture on an RB1 needle. An apical suture is placed in the lateral ureter and then in the 3 o'clock position in the open lower pole calyx. The assistant holds the ureter close to the calyx, keeping it off tension to help allow for a tension-free anastomosis. Next, a posterior suture is placed, again using a 3-0 vicral suture on an RB1. Once the posterior wall is complete, the assistant uses a cystoscope to place a stent in a retrograde fashion. Visual guidance is performed by both the assistant surgeon and the consult surgeon. With the stent in place, the anastomosis is completed in an interrupted fashion using 3-0 vicral suture on RB1 needles. Careful attention is paid to ensure adequate mucosal to mucosal apposition. Here you see the final product with the ureteral calicostomy complete. Next, a portion of gerotas is used to cover the anastomosis. This helps retroperitoneolize the anastomosis and, in theory, increase blood supply to that area. The JP drain is left, all trocars are removed, the operation is completed. The operation took 300 minutes, estimated blood loss was 500 cc's, warm ischemia time was 22 minutes, length of stay was 3 days, and there were no intraoperative or postoperative complications. At one month, the stent was removed in the office. Six weeks after that, which was almost three months after the initial operation, an IVP was performed. At the 10 minute mark, there was prompt excretion bilaterally, there was minimal calyectasis, and there was excellent drainage down to the distal ureter. The patient was pain free. In conclusion, the Da Vinci system enables physicians to perform complex upper urinary tract reconstruction that is safe, effective, and may reduce perioperative morbidity and length of stay associated with open surgical approaches. Further studies are necessary to verify long-term efficacy of minimally invasive reconstructive procedures.